Alright, welcome back to the 1 in 20 show where we're looking to find the next 1 in 20 successful individuals who are pursuing their passions so that you can too. And today, I'm joined in the studio by Greg Bissonnette. Great to be here. Yeah. I'm, I'm honored that you think I'm successful. <laughs> I love your definition of success. Mm. People yeah. that, you know, have a dream and yeah. and they realize their dream or whatever your yes. uh, ultimate uh, yes. definition is. Exactly. Well, I mean, we'll get into it too. We were just talking about the mission statement. You guys all know it. You've been listening and watching and uh, we're, we really appreciate that. Uh, we're on kind of a shorter episode today just because of time constraints. It took us a long time to light in here. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll keep this a little more abbreviated. Um, I wanted to start off by asking you a bit about your childhood. Um, how did it all come about you know what well what we're in the hospital and, and my mom i think she <laughs> no <See? laughs> when i was a kid i was born in 1959 so they they uh, pretty much i think i th there were no epidurals back then but i think they pretty much did the whole like um what's the, what's the thing they put over ether yeah <laughs> and they went in with forcep forceps <laughs> and pulled me and pulled out. You out yeah that's like whoa okay forget about natural childbirth or yeah, let's yeah. go with the jacuzzi yeah. i mean she was <laughs> out and then por forceps <laughs> so my child that's my early childhood yeah yeah um how Wanna about go earlier than that no no, no okay. that no we, we don't need to do okay. that um but yeah, like what what led you to music specifically? Okay. How did yeah. that whole thing begin? My mom and dad were both musicians, professional musicians. My dad had a band in Detroit, and uh, they played all around Detroit for parties, weddings, uh, any kind of festivals. The funny thing is, years ago, before they were DJs, before you were born, Evan, if you went to hear a band or you went to a dance or you went in the lobby of a hotel or you had a high school prom there were bands and that was my dad's gig he had bands that played for events mm -hmm. and my mom played vibes jazz vibes in his band and her sister played piano in the band my aunt so super musical family my brother and sister and i all were super involved with music my brother matt is my favorite bass player he plays bass with this up-and-coming piano player named Elton John, mm. who's really good. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, a little bit, a little, little bit known, little right? A little good, yeah. Sir Elton. Yeah. They're yeah. on a, uh, a 375 show tour right now. And my sister, she played uh, guitar and violin and was super musical. She works for a music production company. And my son and daughter play drums and sing and DJ. My nephews play drums and it's a real musical family. My, mm. my sister-in-law, is a worship leader, uh, singer, great singer. My brother and sister-in-law met at Disneyland when the stage came up out of Space Mountain. They were in the band together then wow. in the early 80s. But because music was always so constant in our house, when we were eating dinner, we were listening to Dave Brubeck and, you know, uh, one, two, three, four songs that are classic. Mm -hmm. And then they, they got us, in a lot of ways, into the Beatles. We were all sitting around uh, when the Beatles came on the Ed Sullivan Show, and I was four, I think. And anyway, my dad, <clears throat> we were all so into the Beatles. My dad was playing a wedding in Detroit, and he came out into the lobby of this hotel, and the lobby was festooned with thousands of screaming girls. And he asked the food and beverage manager, his boss, what's going on? They said, the Beatles are staying upstairs. They're playing tomorrow at Olympia Hockey Arena where the Red Wings play. And he said, the Beatles, man, my wife and I, the kids, we love the Beatles. And my dad, in his outgoing people person way, said, Bob, any chance of getting me close to six tickets for tomorrow? Getting me close to is like getting a deal, buying something. And the guy says, Bud, my dad's name was Bud. Are you crazy? It's the Beatles. They've been sold out for six months. But I like you. Come back at 1 a.m. when your gig's over. I'll see what I can do. And my dad goes back into the bar where everybody's packing up and everything. And he, the guy says, Bud, I got good news and bad news. I've got six tickets for you. And he hands them to him. He said, it's going to be 36 bucks total. Six bucks a ticket. Wow. And my dad's thinking, gee, in 1966, yeah. oh, I'm making 50 bucks on the gig. You know, 36. I'll clear 14. We got to go. We're seeing the Beatles. Yeah. So he we went and saw the Beatles. And I told that to Ringo when we played Detroit last year. I said, you know, a couple of blocks from here, 
is where I saw you when I was seven. He said, was that near here? Because we were at the Fox. And this was called Olympia. I said, yeah, it was like two blocks. He says, let's go. I said, wow. it's torn down now. It's a parking lot. You know, in America, we destroy historic buildings. Sure. <laughs> Instead you know, of water build water. a new one, right, a right. bigger one, build a parking lot, make more money. So anyway, that wow. was kind of my childhood. Yeah. Well, and it's it's amazing. I mean, as as um, as most people know who are you know who know Greg, he's been working with Ringo now in his All Star Band for how many years now? All Star Band since 2008. So I'm going yeah. into my 11th year. Wow. But in 2003, I joined Ringo and the Roundheads, which is the wow. Roundheads were the the British ones that beheaded King Charles. They were yeah. the rebels. Uh-huh. So we were Ringo and the Roundheads back in 2003. My brother and I were both in Ringo and the Roundheads. So it's going on 16 years, which is amazing. To, and I mean, the, just the history, really. I I think about um, you as a as a musician and being the incredible drummer that you are. Being able though to be on that level with a former former Beatle, I was talking to somebody recently about um, the Beatles in general. My grandpa's a huge fan of the Beatles. He's from Britain. He grew up in that in that area. He grew up in Surrey, and the kind of impact they had on the music industry and society. You talked about how they drove you know all those girls crazy because they were so in love with them. When you think about the history and the amount of songs and the hits. Um, it must have been in, in, insane to be a part of, you know, just to be a part of Ringo and what Ringo's doing now uh, that there's only two out of four left. And then one of the shows we played for Ringo's 70th, Paul McCartney did a surprise sh- appearance. We did a little secret sound check that Ringo didn't know about. And at Radio City Music Hall, he came out. We were all done. We would played uh, with a little help from my friends, with a lot of friends, a lot of people that came out that were, even Yoko Ono came out and sang wow. Give Peace a Chance, John's song with Ringo. And everyone left and we're on the side of the stage and Ringo's waiting like, what's going on? Paul comes out, plugs in the bass, today is your birthday. There's Paul and there's Ringo, my hero drummer. I mean, my dad was my number one hero. Here's my dad. With Gene Krupa. He got me to meet Gene Krupa. Oh, yeah, I've seen that photo. I don't know if they'll be able to see that. Don't worry about it. It's It's okay. I got pictures all over my dad and I, Ringo and I. But anyway, my dad was my first drumming hero. Ringo was the guy that I wanted to be in a band because of, because he is the greatest band drummer, the greatest song drummer. The way he plays beats, those songs like Come Together that you and I jammed on 10 years ago, Evan, Come Together would not be Come Together without... Mm-hmm. Classic parts. So he's my favorite song drummer. And the number one reason I started playing drums was to be in a band. Mm-hmm. I saw the girls chasing the Beatles down the street in a hard day's night. I want to do that. <laughs> but more than that, the music, the way they wrote, the way they played, they wrote their own songs, the way they played and harmonized, and the songs, those years that the Beatles were together, nothing will ever compare. Mm-hmm. And one funny story, I was sitting in a famous big, huge, like Ritz-Carlton or Four Seasons or something with on the Ringo Tour in Mexico City. And I opened my window. And we're all on the same floor. I opened my window. Thousands of people out front. Kids, middle-aged people, Gen Z, Gen X, baby boomers, grandparents, you oh name it. Gosh. They're all singing. We all live in the yellow submarine. <laughs> and I got the submarine cutouts. Yeah, yeah. And it's just traffic stopped. And I looked about a half a mile down the road because my buddy, Melly Baldwin, was playing drums on the Justin Bieber tour. Huh. And they're at an equally huge, great hotel with an equally huge traffic stopped scene. And they're all with the signs, we love you, Justin. Baby, 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 George's oh my gosh. baby. And I'm looking like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> and Ringo walks by, my door was open. He walks by, what are you doing? I said, I'm just looking out here. And they couldn't see him, they could hardly see me. I said, look at the thousands of people. And he kind of glanced away from the window and he says, imagine that times 10 every year for seven or eight years, Beatlemania. I mean, they couldn't move. Oh. So anyway, it's amazing. the greatest. Yeah, that is amazing. And, and that I got to tell you really quick yeah, because yeah. because you mentioned dreams, you know, my dreams I've always and I'm not trying to be preachy or anything, but I've always linked my dreams with what I pray for. Mm. And I just believe that, you know, some people, a lot of friends of mine, well you can't pray for success or gigs or things to happen for yourself. And I said, "Yeah, you can." 
it says, you know, knock mm-hmm. and it'll be opened, you know, mm-hmm. um, ask in my name, you know, mm-hmm. and I think it's all about God's will. Mm-hmm. But if God's will happens to be in line with your will and you practice really hard and you do all the work and I kind of hate this word due diligence. I'm so tired. I'm tired <laughs> of hearing due diligence. I'm hi- tired of hearing trajectory. That's yeah. another word that's good. Yeah. And collusion. If I hear those three phrases anymore, I want to. <laughs> anyway, but uh. if it's your, uh, if you do your due diligence, and yeah. you practice and you network and you do everything. I prayed that I could get the Maynard Ferguson gig when I was in high school because I wanted to play. I was a minor trumpet player, <laughs> drummer. I wanted to play in Maynard Ferguson's band, the greatest lead trumpet player of all time and a great friend. And I got the gig. <laughs> I'm telling you, prayer works. I prayed about, well, I don't want to be labeled as a big band jazz guy. Yeah. I want to be able to play rock gigs like Journey, Van Halen, Genesis. I got the gig with David Lee Roth. I mean, it's like, hello. Amazing. And then I prayed about playing with Ringo. Yeah. I prayed about playing with Ringo and Paul. I mean, if if it's God's will and things are, you know, if you really uh, take it seriously and you work on, on what your dreams are, but we can only do so much, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and with God, all things are possible. So mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's, you know, you just... Don't practice, don't do anything, pray, you'll get the gig. But it's your work for me. Yep, and, and we talk about what you're hitting on right now is something that we um, have heard in very different ways from a bunch of different artists and people that I've looked up to for a long time, just just like you. And, um, and everybody says that, that you have to put in your time. Um, but yeah, I think faith is a huge part of that. I think that comes down, everybody identifies with that in, in a different way, whether, you know, depending on what their belief system is. But I, I do believe that you do have to put in that work. And that's something that we talk about on the show a lot. Um, and you're a testament to that um, with all the work that you have done and the work that you continue to do to make yourself better and better and better, right? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> So I, I kind of want to segue this, uh, since this is more abbreviated of an interview, um, I meant to ask you a little bit about where you see the future of music going. Um, cause obviously we don't have enough time to dissect your whole career, which is extensive <coughs> and wonderful. And, um, anybody who doesn't know Greg, you should look him up. He's on I'm the one internet. of the world's drummers. Yeah. I'm one definitely of the world. one of the world's drummers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but the future of our music is gone. Yeah, that to me, and let me before I um, ask you that totally, I would say uh, I'll preface that by saying with so much of, especially from um, an actual musician um, like you who plays an actual drum kit, um, the way that music is becoming so digital, <clears throat> every hit on, you know, most every single hit that's available right now in the Billboard 100 charts is you know not entirely but is almost entirely hip hop um you know digital music right digital drums it's machines machines right what's your opinion on the way that music will continue to grow do you think there'll be a resurgence cuz it seems like there's yeah. always some sort of analog resurgence to things of old but yeah i don't know well the answer is and this is the answer that i wish some of my when i go out and do seminars <laughs> i ask a question i wish i would get this answer and it's i don't know and that's really my answer because I don't have a crystal ball, but I have some hopes mm-hmm. and I have some hunches. And the, I guess I'll start with the hunches, and that's that history does tend to repeat itself. And uh, the cream does tend to rise to the top. Mm-hmm. And to me, the cream of the crop, for my taste, isn't machines. It's real humans making music. <clears throat> and um, there are a lot of hopeful bands and a lot of hopeful musicians uh, p- musicians that give hope to the craft of, uh, and it can, I don't want to say analog because you can record my drums and a guitar and a bass and singer and horns and, and record a band live and use analog tape, but usually as soon as it goes on your phone, it's digital. So mm-hmm. digital analog, we won't even get into that whole thing and zeros and ones and what makes digital, but acoustic drums. I also play electric drums. I play Dixon, that's the brand of mm-hmm. the acoustic drums I play, and I play Roland electronic digital mm-hmm. drums, and I, I do them both on recordings, on live, and clinics, and I believe in both. Mm-hmm. Um, but my favorite kind of music is music that has a, a band with a real drummer. Yeah. And I look back to the Beatles. And, um, but nowadays, there's a friend of mine, he's your age, 19, and he's in one of the biggest 
bands that's up and coming in the world and it's all guys playing real instruments and singing and they've pulled from a lot of resources of bands from the 60s and 70s but they've got their own sound who do you think i'm talking about mm. and i think like the beatles did they wouldn't know this band is making people because i travel all around the world i was just in europe i was in china and people know about this band from michigan where i'm from Frankenmuth, Michigan, a German community where they mm. still have Bavarian homes and Zender chicken dinners. <laughs> this band is called Greta Van Fleet. Mm -hmm. Have I you know heard of that band? Mm -hmm. This lady, this Dutch lady used to come to all their shows and she would just come to all their shows. What's your name? My name is Greta Van Fleet. We're going to call her band Greta Van Fleet. So Danny Wagner, the drummer, is a friend of mine. And that gives me hope. Mm. The Greta Van Fleet guys playing, you know, music that's touches my soul mm -hmm. and bands like the Foo Fighters. Mm -hmm. Dave Grohl, when Kurt Cobain died, he could have mm -hmm. just said later, but he said, I'm gonna pick up, shake the dust off, and I'm gonna start my own band where I'm playing guitar mm -hmm. and singing, not playing drums. Mm -hmm. And I get Taylor Hawkins, another great friend of mine, and Nate Mandel and, and uh, Chris Shiflett, and put this band together, uh, do the whole rock band thing. Yeah. Even bands like, even though their last few singles are machine, Maroon 5. Yeah, Maroon 5. A lot mm -hmm. of acoustic drums, a lot of acoustic. She asked me to stay. <laughs> Listen, that's just real drums. Mike yes. Elizondo, mm -hmm. who goes to Calvary, where I go to church down the street, he's head of A&R for Warner Brothers. He produced a lot of Maroon 5, a lot of people that are huge. John Mayer gives me hope yes, for bands. John Mayer. And, um, hmm. and Justin Bieber, man, you might... You know, think, ah, eh, really? And even though there are a lot of machines on his record, when you go to the tour, it's live drums. Melly Baldwin is a great drummer. Justin Bieber is a really good drummer. Mm -hmm. And he's super talented. He mm -hmm. doesn't even do all the rehearsals, comes in, never misses a word or a dance step. Super talented guy. Mm -hmm. And so the, those kind of people give me hope. And I just hope that it comes back around. I'll tell you what's crazy. <laughs> 15 years ago, I went to China, mm -hmm. and I literally asked a 1,000 people in a room, okay, this free symbol goes to who can tell me who Buddy Rich is? Now, you can probably tell me who Buddy yeah, Rich Buddy is. Yeah, Buddy Rich. Who's Buddy Rich? Well, he's one of the original drummers from the 1950s, 40s. He's an original jazz guy, yeah. probably the greatest drummer technically that ever walked the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. He taught us all how to play solos and everything. And yeah, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> nobody knew. One guy out there knew. Ah, I said, what? He said, uh, great jazz drama? Yes, you win the symbol. <laughs> now I went back a couple months ago to China, and more than anywhere in the world, I judged this drum festival, thousands and thousands of contestants from all over China, and they're all playing acoustic drums phenomenally. Wow. So there's a big... There's a future. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> that army from the east, you know, and I'm going to be playing drums. <laughs> Ask John MacArthur uh, about that. Yeah, really. <clears throat> um, no, that's great. That's that's wonderful. I mean, um, and two because I can't go into too much depth with the time we have. Um, Come on, we got a little bit. Of time. We got a little more. We left. got a whole five minutes. Yeah, we got five minutes. So. Um, I guess really where I want to go with this too is um, I always wrap these segments up um, talking about um, kind of future advice because I think a lot of my um, my age kids Gen watch Z's. this. Yep. Are you a Gen Z? 20 I don't years know, millennial. I think, you, I, think I, might be, I think you're a little young for a millennial. 98 is when you were born. My son yeah. was born in 98. He's a Gen Z. Gen Z. Okay. I think. I think millennial I so. was like up to 97 or something. <sighs> yeah. You should check. I don't care. I'm a baby boomer. Yeah, yeah. You're, <laughs> that's all you're I a know. couple decades back. I'm, a, I'm coming up on 60. <laughs> oh, Yikes. my gosh. Yeah, that's crazy. I know. My parents are, are getting up there, too. Um, but uh, some, It some, beats the alternative. What? Dying. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should, without breaking the mic. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, anyway, uh, that was a dad joke for sure. Yeah, I got um, a lot of dad jokes. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm a dad. <laughs> yeah, you are a dad. My favorite job. Yeah. That's success to me. Mm. There's nothing more important in life. A friend of mine, a great drummer, Mark Cranny, he played with Jethro Tull, Gina Vanelli, all these bands. His mom said, you know, business is business. And this is a woman who would now be about 103 years old. Wow. She said, but that's man's business. Now, in 2018, you better watch what you say. Mm -hmm. You can't say anything. Mm -hmm. But she said, that's man's business. She says, my job was God's business, raising a child from the time they're born till you pass away. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you pass away before your child. Mm -hmm. And she didn't. Mm -hmm. her, her son passed away 
before he had a lot of bad diabetes. But anyway, um, yeah, that's that's success to me is you know, being a dad, mm. helping to mm. put my fingerprint on my kids, man. Mm -hmm. That's Absolutely. nothing more important than guiding someone through their life. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Well, and that's that's wonderful. Um, kind of, I guess, kind of in closing. Um, do you have any advice for people um, like me and like Nate and a lot of my audience who were all really readily trying to chase these goals? Like for me in film, I'm trying to, you know, reach these next levels. This podcast that I'm doing is like a tertiary um, result of that, but soon and now has been, been becoming more important to me yeah. because I've been able to make some better connections that are helping me yeah. in that world. I do have some advice. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Give it to me. Okay, yeah. so uh, you already are a living ex living example of the advice I give around the world to people, and not just drummers, other musicians, people, teachers, educators. They all come to these seminars that I give because they're put on by the companies, and uh, I'm there to help sell my equipment I use, but I'm there to give life lessons too. Yeah. And they ask the same thing. What advice would you give? And I say, no matter what your industry... Film for you, drums for me, uh, baseball for Nate, whatever it is. That whole thing, uh, thing is a word I try not to use because it just <laughs> means you don't know what you're talking about. That whole area of expertise, whether it's rudiments or lenses or microphones or editing or, you know, trying to hit a curveball, all that's only half of the pie. The other half that will help you, I think, become successful is the other half of the pie that has nothing to do with the technical side. It has to do with, Evan, what kind of person are you? Hmm. Are you the kind of person that likes people? The music industry, the film industry, very people-oriented industries. Hmm. Are you the kind of person that people are gonna want to have on the set, that are gonna want to sit in an editing bay with, that are gonna want to have, you know, doing scenes, behind the scenes, all this crazy stuff that we do? When you're riding a bus out to a shoot, or you're on a bus to a gig, that bus becomes kind of a submarine very quickly, vacuum packed. One person with a bad attitude can bring down the vibe really quickly. Mm. That person usually isn't asked, asked back yeah. for other tours or other films sure, or documentaries sure. or shoots. So if you can be someone that lifts people up, and you already are this guy, and so is Nate, and I know Amy and your families, and but a lot of people in the world that I've met, I've recommended a lot of great drummers for gigs. They last about a week, and then who else do you have? Because they complain a lot, maybe, that's one thing you don't wanna do. And when you're starting out in the film industry or in the music industry, it's tough. You don't get a lot of money in the beginning. You might be opening up on a show with 10 other bands. You might be staying in a Motel 6 with three or four other people, and you know it's a dodgy motel. The reason they leave a light on for you is because it's in a sketchy area. You know, it's a, it can be rough. Don't complain. Hmm. By the grace of God, you're, you're shooting stuff. People are going to see. Because of the Internet, you can have a podcast and the world can see it. Same with music. You can post something on YouTube or drummer. The Drum Channel is the best site, thedrumchannel.com. You can post things, have people all around the world see it. Try to be positive. The glass is not half empty. The glass is half full. Try to be someone that compliments people. When you're on a set with a bunch of people, especially dealing with egos and film stars or rock stars, yeah. you've got to realize that people's egos, a lot of times they're based in insecurity. So I'm kind of a people pleaser. I enjoy doing a recording session and if somebody wants to hear something, a producer wants something, the artist, an engineer, I want to make them happy. I'll write in different colored Sharpies. Well, the artist wants this in blue. The producer wants this in red. The record label wants this in magenta. So I'll try to play all the stuff. And at the end of the day, if they give me a check and say, thanks, Greg, we really enjoyed working with you. We'll have you back. That's what you want to have people mm -hmm. say, Evan, is, Evan, you did a great job. You showed up right here at 11 o'clock. You said you'd be here at 11. You were here, you and Nate, at 11. That's the first thing. Be on time. But that's part of people skills. Those people skills are 50%. You gotta have the art, the talent, the, 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 the trade down. But half of the trade is people skills. Mm -hmm. Try complimenting people. Yeah. You know, just randomly at a, at a session, a film session or anything, just say, man, where'd you get those shoes? And you're not trying to BS them, you really like their shoes. You go, mm -hmm. where'd you get those? Those are like high top vans, I didn't know they made those. They're black, <laughs> I like those. You know, at the van store, they got one pair left. 
you just kind of lifted that person up. That solo you played on this song, really? Yeah, yeah, I really love that edit, you know. That stuff is, is being a light in the world and lifting people up, and you will get more work, I guarantee it. People don't want to work with negative people. Hmm. That's a perfect summation. Well, and Greg, I just wanted to thank you for doing this. Um, it's really cool to have you on and to talk about all these important things that need to be said. Thank you. Because um, so many people don't want to say it. So uh, thank you for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you soon.